T-I-F-U. By training my dog to pee every time she hears a zipper. Okay. So a few months ago terrible tragedy struck and I lost my dog of 9 years to an undiagnosed heart condition. As I work from home he was my constant companion every day all day long. I loved that dog so much. His loss was soul crushing. I was ruined and completely unable to function. My wife decided to get a new dog for me, Cassie. Just 9 weeks old and not really ready to leave her puppy mom. I was absolutely not ready. But over the past few weeks we have bonded and while she will never replace my old pup she has filled an empty black hole in my heart and the darkness has mostly lifted. Meet Kessie. An absolutely wonderful pup just one and a half pounds of fun and fluff. She will never be much more than four pounds but she's such a bright little thing. I love her very much. But that's not the foo. The foo came in training Kessie not to piss all over the house. Pooping outside was instant and effortless. But peeing? That's another story. We did the crate training thing. The pee pad thing. The shame thing. The treat thing. Kessie is only one and a half pounds or I swear I'd try a rolled up newspaper. Just kidding. She's so cute she can piss where she likes and I'll happily clean it up just for a snuggle now and again. That said, it's an issue we needed to solve. One night was really bad. I would take her out, walk around, spend one half an hour with her, nothing. The moment we walk in the door she squats on the rug. A R R R R R R R R R R G H. Finally, in desperation, we go out into the backyard. It's private, dark. So I unzip, whip it out, and let go, saying, Kessie, like this. She runs over, sniffs, squats, and pisses on top of my spot. Perfect. I was amazed. We ran inside. I gave her a doggy treat, praised the heck out of her, and had a little puppy party of joy. Next night, we repeat. Again, great success. Every time I take her out, let out a bit of a squirt she runs over and pees. Such a good girl. Lately if I even start to unzip she squats and pees. Perfect every time. So much so that we can start to pick up the pee pads. She can have free run of the house at least for short times when we are home and watching. No more mess. Ah. Peace. One catch. It has to be me that takes her out. Obviously. Because I can't explain to the wife what's going on and Kessie won't do her business for anybody but me. But I figure she will eventually catch on. Right? So some friends come over. They greet Kessie with hugs and snuggles and praise her. My wife is explaining what a good girl she is and how quickly she became house trained. When the guy unzips his coat. Kessie runs over, squats and pees in front of him and runs over to the treat jar waiting for her reward. FML. Turns out I haven't actually trained her to pee outside at all. I've trained her to piss to the sound of a zipper opening. Too long did not read. I've trained my dog to pee on top of my own pee or even at the sound of an opening zipper. Okay, so the trick is to keep her outside as long as possible. Don't come back in until she pees. Yes it's time consuming, but proper training always is. Keep the treat in your pocket. The very moment she pees, get all happy and excited. Make sure you say the word pee or tinkle or whatever, and give her the treat. Do this every time. After a few times, keep the treat in your hand where she can see it. She'll get excited. Tell her to go pee, tinkle, whatever word you used when you were training her. She'll associate the word with the action, and the reward, praise will let her know it's a positive action. It's important to keep using the same word. She'll pick up pretty quickly. She seems like a smart little dog. Edit. Thanks for the awards guys. Today I fucked up when I shared the news about my job. A few days ago I, 19 male, started working at Adult World. My first job ever. I shared the news with a few friends, but decided not to tell my family because I was convinced my parents would not approve of me working at a sex shop. Little did I know that my sister was hooking up with one of my friends behind my back. Needless to say, my sister eventually found out about my job. In an attempt to embarrass me, she showed up at the store while I was working. Mission accomplished. I was embarrassed. To add insult to injury, she acted like a customer and asked me for information about random sex toys she pretended to be interested in. I played along because the manager was keeping an eye on me. For the record, siblings of the opposite sex should never touch the same butt plug, especially if there's eye contact. When my sister was done playing games, I begged her not to tell our parents. She promised. I should have stopped running my mouth at that moment, but I had to know who talked. I made her tell me, which pressured her to come clean about her relationship with my friend. 
she got upset and left. The following day, aka yesterday, my mom appeared in the store. Of course my sister didn't keep her mouth. Probably out of spite. My mom wanted to know why she had to find out from someone else about my job. I said I didn't think she would approve. My mom said she approved, as long as I could get her a discount. The fuck, mother. I thought she was joking until I had to bag some of the products she literally purchased. If my dad shows up as well, since it seems to be a family thing, then I might fucking fire myself. TLR got a job at a sex shop. Wanted to keep it a secret from my family. Failed. My sister visited me at the shop. An obvious attempt to embarrass me. She succeeded. Next to show up was my mom, who actually bought sex toys with my mandatory assistance. With parents like this who needs an uncle? Your mom is awesome and supportive. Your sister is average little sibling asshole. You're a lucky one. Honestly, good for you man. You have an open-minded family who supports you. Most people aren't nearly as fortunate. This is the perfect opportunity to embarrass them, not yourself. Next time at the dinner table, with extended family. Ask them how their sex toys are working out. Let them know about new lubes or ass ticklers they might be interested in, etc, etc. First rule of merchandising. Be proud of the shit you sell, and sell it well. TIFU, by talking bad about a cult in my hometown. Yikes. Normal day at work, boring and uneventful as usual. Friend at work was discussing video games, asked for his gamer ID so we could play some later. It's the same name as a famous cult leader, the one who had the people drink the Kool-Aid that made them sleepy. We got on a tangent about Jonestown, Waco, and then I brought up a cult that live on the property of an abandoned haunted house that's situated in a cave. Another co-worker in the room became very upset at me for insinuating that it was a cult. I said, it sounds a lot like a cult from what I've read and seen on TV about it. She became very upset and told me I didn't know what I was talking about. I thought that was weird, so I searched for them online again after not doing so for many years. Guess whose photo is on an interview piece done about the cult? My co-worker. I feel significant other fucking bad guys. I basically just shit-talked this girl's whole community. I'm going to apologize for what I said. Maybe I should just keep my mouth shut. Ouch. Too long did not read. I talked bad about a religious group in front of my co-workers and found out that one of the members of that group is also one of my co-workers and it's very awkward. I want to apologize but I feel so awkward about it. People in cults should be made aware of how the outside world perceives them. Yeah the part of this story that was interesting was the abandoned haunted house situated in a cave and I feel like that's the story I need here. If it's an actual cult don't feel bad. Just for the record, it wasn't cool aid. It was flavor aid. I really understand why you feel bad, but seriously, don't. There's this thing called cognitive dissonance. It's the feeling you get when you're confronted with evidence that contradicts a deeply held belief. It's an uncomfortable feeling, and people tend to avoid it. Causing someone cognitive dissonance is not a bad thing. If the person is in a cult, it's going to bother them to be told it's a cult, but they need to know. Cults are bad regardless of the cultist's feelings. Today I fucked up by wearing my engagement ring. Background. I refer to my now fiancé as my husband mainly for simplicity. We have lived together for over three years, share finances, dogs, are each other's medical contacts and beneficiaries on all financial items. In effect we have a marriage without the piece of paper and it confuses people less when I refer to him that way. My fiancé has been trying to propose to me for the past three years. He has had at least four different attempts but at each attempt I have something happen that fucks it up. We had picked out my engagement ring about three and a half years ago and we had gotten my ring sized and everything at that point, this is important later on. I didn't know when the proposal was happening but we were serious enough at that point that I knew it was. However, and I know this is some nonsense on my part every time we took a step forward in committing to each other my abandonment and commitment issues would resurface. My fiancé was always patient and would sit with me through multiple anxiety and panic attacks on things like our first home purchase, our first dog, our first car, dot etc. For the first proposal attempt he booked a romantic getaway in the mountains for the two of us it was very well thought out and so romantic. Unfortunately at that point I had pretty bad abandonment and commitment issues, as soon as I was suspicious that he was proposing I had a several day anxiety and panic attack. Long story short, he didn't propose then but we did decide to move in to test things. 
For attempts 2-4 he would always try to appeal to my outdoor seaside and would take me back country camping or hiking. At this point I trusted him implicitly and had dealt with my issues. I desperately wanted to have our ring on my finger more than anything because of what it meant for us to have overcome those psychological hurdles. Now on each of those occasions something would always go wrong. I would get injured, accidentally pee myself due to a bad latrine setup, and chronic aura migraine flare-ups. All things he later claimed were not the way he wanted his proposal to go, even if he had been able to salvage the trip after that. This man never gave up. Now for his final attempt he decided he was done playing around. He Jedi mind tricked me to agreeing to travel to Cozumel on a week-long all-inclusive vacation to relax as our first post-COVID vacation. Seeing his enthusiasm made me agree even though I hate traveling. After an eventful first three days on the island, my darling, patient beaut of a man proposed. Obviously I said yes. We put the ring on my finger and took some great pictures. After a couple of hours I called my family and showed them my finger and told them our proposal story. Now because this is Cozumel and it is very humid couples proposing here typically don't get their ring sized until after they get back home because the humidity makes you swell. Well we didn't know that. My previously sized ring all of sudden was too small for my rapidly fattening finger. I was so excited and refused to acknowledge the swelling until it was too late and the ring could not be easily removed. Over the next 24 hours my man and I freaked out over how to get it off. Each attempt more painful than the last. We tried the string method, oil method, hand in water for so long it becomes wrinkly method. Nothing worked. We finally gave in and called the paramedic at 3 a.m. and he informed us that if my finger's circulation was cut off for too long I could lose my finger and the best option before it got to that point would be to cut off the ring. I could not stomach that and since I hadn't yet lost circulation and finger was primarily irritated and swollen I figured I could make it until we got back home. The significance of that ring for us was worth me putting up with a bit more pain until we got on a plane in two days time. Well boy was that a mistake. Today when we returned from one of our excursions my finger was so swollen and painful that I just could not handle it. We finally just gave in and called the paramedics K one of the most painful experiences of my life. We used the string method over sections of my finger with lots of pressure and maneuvering. My fiancé had to hold me down while I screamed in pain as the paramedics strategically cut off circulation to parts of my finger but it finally came off. Best $1,400 pesos plus $20 USD tip ever spent. My finger is still swollen as hell and super painful but will be healed in a day or two. My ring is intact and once again I learned how patient and loving my partner is. Would I do it again? No way in hell. Next all-inclusive wedding bands, engagement rings and jewelry are staying locked up at home in a safe. Too long did not read. After multiple failed attempts at proposing my finis proposed in Cozumel. I fucked up by being overexcited to wear my ring, even though the humidity caused my fingers to swell, and refusing medical removal because I was afraid it would end in my ring being cut off. Finally agreed to extremely painful ring removal. I am going to be honest, for a moment I thought you lost your finger and that was the fuck up. Congrats on the engagement. But holy moly. It seems like it never ends with you ha 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 in the nicest way possible. What a waste of three years to do something you both wanted. I get the grand gesture but damn. After the second attempt just do it over a, a home cooked meal and bottle of wine at home. Had you actually gotten on the plane with it on, you would have been fucked way harder. Low air pressure in the plane, and your finger would have swollen more than on the beach. Several months later, it was finally time for the wedding. My now husband rented a full hotel in Cabo for four days, but every day I kept spilling spaghetti on all of my clothes, and I started missing our dog too much. He booked next weekend to try again though. Your fiancé has the patience of a saint. You know you can just get engaged lying in bed or over a home-cooked meal, right?